Today I want us to unlearn the stereotypical body types that we and our bodies have been labelled with for decades, such as apples and pears and triangles and rectangles. We are not shapes, we are not fruits, we are individual body types, we all have our own unique proportions. Um, but today I want to share my take on body proportions and how you can kind of figure out what kind of body dominant type you have and how to dress for that. So I've developed the idea of a body dominant type. So it's kind of like what area of your body is most dominant. I developed this idea when I was working on building a workshop that I ran um, a few weeks ago, maybe even months ago now at this stage. And I just kind of came up with this concept. I was sick of people saying top heavy, bottom heavy. And I feel like heavy has such negative connotations to it sometimes because everyone is being kind of shamed for their weight these days. And I just didn't want to have any negative connotations around um, body typing and just because it's there to help us figure out what silhouettes may work better on our figures. And there shouldn't be any negative connotations with that. It should be just easy to dress your body without being shamed. So I came up with the idea of um, my five kind of dominant types. So the first one is top dominant. And this is when like your top half is bigger than your bottom half, or it's just a bit wider. Maybe it's your shoulders are wider than your hips or your bust is wider than your hips. And that kind of typically will kind of invert a little bit more like this. Um, the next one is bottom dominant. So similar to top dominant, but it's where you will carry more width on your bum and hips. Um, or maybe you just tend to have more narrow shoulders. The third one is midsection dominant and this is kind of you know you could be quite even everywhere else but maybe your midsection just kind of carries a little bit more weight as well next we have balanced without a defined waist so this is when your hips and your shoulders are pretty much even but you don't really have much of a defined waist you could be quite an athletic figure just a bit straight up and down and finally we have balanced with a defined waist so similar against the last one your shoulders and hips are quite even in width but you have a little bit more of an hourglass shape. Your waist does nip in a little bit more. And so because we are all unique in our body shapes and sizes, I think this is quite a, um, a simple approach to it, I guess. It's almost like making it really simple in order to get a better result out of it um, and to understand our bodies even better. But because it's literally just about which point do we, you know, which point is wider when we look head on at our bodies, our shoulders wider, do we need to balance out the bottom half of our outfits a bit more um, if that's the kind of look we want, if we want to go for that balanced look? You know, if our hips are wider, maybe we need to add a bit more volume in our top half of our outfits and things like that. So just about kind of using our clothing to manipulate the shape a little bit in order to maybe end up with just a bit more of a balanced silhouette. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands today. So I've also done all these little illustrations to kind of help you um, see the different examples as well. So I hope this is going to be really helpful. As I haven't talked about this approach too much, apart from in that workshop, I would love to get your feedback on it. And if you felt like it was helpful for you to figure out your own body type, um, body dominance type from this, yeah, any feedback would be so much appreciated. So please do leave me a comment. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up as well and I can make more videos like this. I'd love to make another video in the future about how we can use these kind of body dominant types to, to support our wardrobes, our capsule wardrobes and our style and how we can kind of merge the two together. But I don't have time to talk about everything today. So I'm just gonna focus on how we could figure out what our body type is. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take some body measurements. And this is gonna help us to interpret what the wider points on our body is, because when we can see it written down in figures, it's easier. Sometimes when we look in the mirror, it's a little bit harder to judge. So we wanna take a measurement of our shoulders, shoulder width, our bust as well. So like I said, bust can determine if you're going to be more top dominant as well as shoulders. So whatever is the wider point, that will be the kind of dominating point. Um, we also want to take a measurement of our waist and our hips. Our hips we're going to measure around the widest point because there's no point measuring around your hip bone because we do naturally go out a little bit more after that. So you kind of want to measure around the bum, whatever is the widest point. And this is also really helpful if you're using measurements, um, your own measurements to shop online or anything like that. You're going to want to measure the widest point because that is the point that this garment needs to fit you. We're also going to work out our leg to body ratio as well. So in architecture and art and design there's the, this idea of the golden ratio and this is when things are broken up into thirds and they're typically more aesthetically pleasing that way. 
Hence why I'm sitting here and not here, because I feel like sitting off to one side just looks a little bit more appealing. And let me know if you agree, but you know, this is used in so many different things, in photography, in art and everything. So I think it's just that slight asymmetry as well as quite appealing to the eye. Um, and so when this is applied to our bodies, the idea is that our torso would make up one third of our bodies or, you know, bodies counting from shoulders to feet. Our torso would be about one third and our legs would be the other two thirds so that our waist is kind of sitting at that perfect third ratio. So that golden ratio. So a couple more measurements you're going to need to figure this out is from collarbone down to your waist or wherever kind of your waist where it kind of dips in naturally. That's your natural waist. So collarbone down to that point and then you want your waist down to probably ankle bone. You don't necessarily need to do the mats on this but you can work out from those measurements what kind of ratio you're at but generally it's going to be around maybe um, one to two or maybe like one to 1.3 something like that. If you're finding that your torso is a little bit shorter and your legs are feeling really long and you're more like one quarter to three quarters there are a few little um, styling tricks as well that you can use to lower your waist if you do want to get that golden ratio. So you can wear longer tops um, or maybe just don't tuck them in. You can wear things that would sit a little bit lower than your natural waist. So you're kind of creating the illusion of a lower waist. Likewise, if you find that your waist is really low and you're more like half and half with your torso and legs, you can wear things that are more high-waisted that will draw the eye up. Maybe they come up a bit further than your natural waist. Maybe if you don't have a very defined waist, it can be hard to create this golden ratio so you want to wear belts around that kind of perfect perfect third I mean it's never perfect but the ideal golden ratio wear something belted wear a crop jacket wear a crop top wear high-waisted things that just come up to that eye line maybe it's like a tied cardigan or something like that so you can always use your clothing to kind of manipulate these proportions a little bit so once you've figured out what your dominant type is then you want to think about what kind of body type you'd like to have. Some people will want that typical hourglass where it's like balanced shoulders and hips and you've got that really defined waist. It's quite a feminine um, silhouette but you might not necessarily want that. You might want something a little bit less of a feminine shape, less curvy. Maybe you want to look a bit more kind of straight up and down so you wear things that are a little bit um, less fitted on the waist. So you can use your clothing then to manipulate this idea of what your perfect figure would be. Typically, if you are top dominant, you can balance out your body proportions by wearing something um, looser and kind of with more volume on the bottom half. So maybe some wide leg trousers, a pleated flared skirt. You can try um, maybe even like a peplum shape or something like that that kind of adds a little bit of um, shape on your hips, even like an A-line skirt, anything like that that just kind of Anything that goes out and just creates a little bit of bulk and a little bit of volume around your bottom half is going to balance out your top half. And on the flip side of that, if you are trying, if you are more bottom dominant and you want to balance out your top half, you can wear things like structured shoulders, like a nice blazer. You can wear shoulder pads. Um, depends how 80s you want to go. You can wear blouses, maybe with a bit of a ruffle or just a bit more of like a volume of sleeve. Whatever is kind of your style because I know some of these things aren't for everybody. So whatever is your within your personal style, personality, and then trying to find these ways of playing up with volume. If you're a midsection dominant, you may want to try a mix of both. So maybe you want to add a bit of volume to the top and the bottom, and that way it will kind of slim down your middle a little bit more, and it will almost create that balanced with a waist effect instead. So you want to add a little bit of volume on top. Maybe again, it could be a structured shoulder, Maybe you're going to wear a wide leg trouser as well. So you're creating the volume on top and the volume on bottom. And then you can kind of add a belt to the waist or maybe you just don't want to draw any attention to the waist and you just kind of want to keep the volume and just let things kind of sit nicely over your midsection. Another style that's really flattering for people who are midsection dominant is something like a smock dress or a trapeze dress because this just kind of hides the figure almost completely. But you know, if your legs are your best feature, you can wear like a mini smock dress and show those off. You can wear sleeveless items and show off your arms if your arms are one of your good features. You know, again, like I said, play up your best bits and the bits that you really, really love. Um, and don't worry so much about the other bits. There's always ways of kind of working your wardrobe to support your body. 
if you're even with a defined waist, that might be the kind of desired shape that you want. Um, but if you're looking to add more curves to your body, again, you can use some of the, my previous tips like wearing A-line shapes, wearing wide leg trousers, wearing like a pleated style. Um, pleats are really nice to add a little bit of volume on the hips as well. Um, maybe you want to add a bit more volume up top. Again, also some things to consider are like bust size, things like that, that can kind of also throw off things a little bit. So if you're quite, you know, even, but you are conscious that you have a smaller chest, maybe you want to add a bit more volume up here that kind of disguises it or adds that volume. Likewise, if you have a bigger bust and you want to kind of minimize it a little bit, you might want to avoid any ruffles and furls on your top half as this just kind of emphasizes it more. So maybe you want to wear things that are a little bit more skimming on the body, still can be loose, but a little bit more of kind of a flatter material, if that makes sense. So no ruffles and frills and gathers and things like that. And also a V-neck is really great as well to minimize the look of a bigger chest because it just kind of draws the eye down and it's really elongating. So it kind of elongates the neck and the chest. You don't have to go too low if you're conscious of cleavage or if you love your cleavage, then by all means, wear whatever V-neck you want. Wrap styles as well are great because they do just create that division between the um, breasts and it kind of just divides them instead of looking like one kind of one area, you know, it divides them in two, which is really flattering too. So just to summarize the five dominant types so that you can remember and that you can kind of go back to your measurements and check in again. We have top dominant when your shoulders or bust are wider than your bottom half. Bottom dominant when your hips or bum are wider than your shoulders or bust. Um, midsection dominant when you carry most of your width in your waist and kind of middle stomach, um, which I guess a lot of women, as, as women, hormonal women, we carry a lot of um, weight around that area due to estrogen. Um, or just to a touch point, um, different times of the month, depending on hormones, your body can fluctuate too. So you may lose your waist a little bit or, you know, be a little bit more midsection dominant sometimes of the month. Um, so it can be nice to understand this and then just dress a little bit differently around these times, still keeping in your own, own personal styles, so you still feel really good, but just kind of playing things up a little bit so that you feel more comfortable. Number four was even with a defined waist. So that was when your shoulders and hips are similar width and you have that defined waist is kind of a, um, your waist is a lot smaller measurement basically than, than the other points. Um, and then lastly was balanced without a defined waist. So hips and shoulders and waist are all around the same kind of measurement. If you aren't comfortable taking your measurements because they're in any way triggering to you, then you can absolutely just take a photo and maybe just look and analyze that. If you can, even if you have it on kind of, I don't know, Instagram stories or something, you can draw lines from like shoulder to shoulder and hip to hip and just kind of see if the lines are similar width or which one's bigger. Um, please do this with the most amount of kindness you have for your body that you can summon because I know, you know, body shapes and sizes and weights can be really triggering and a really touchy subject for a lot of us, um, most of us in fact. And I don't want you to feel bad by taking your measurements and not liking the result that you see. So, so if that is going to be triggering for you, maybe just take a photo um, or maybe just ask someone if they think your shoulders are wider than your hips and just stand head on, but like, do you think this is wider or this is wider? And then you don't even have to take a photo. So do it in the kindest way possible, but absolutely no judgment. This is why I wanted to create this kind of body dominance type and not be calling us apples or pears, or I can't even remember. I was gonna say grapefruit. I don't even know what that would be, um, <laughs> or banana. You know, we're not shapes, we're human beings. We all have, you know, beautiful bodies and yeah, they change from time to time. And our dominant type might change from time to time too, but that doesn't mean we need to slap a label on ourselves and like that is us. A little bit of a ramble at the end, but yeah, please do let me know if this technique or this kind of um, concept resonates with you because it's very new to me, um, but I really want to develop it in the best way possible. So we we'll absolutely love your feedback. If you aren't subscribed already, please do so because you will not want to miss when I post my next video on this topic, which will be how to take these body types and how to style them. So I, will, I know I gave you a little bit of style advice, but I'll go that one step further and give you as much as I've got. Um, also, if you enjoyed this video, you might like this next video, which is all about 
creating a style uniform. So based on your own personal style, what are the pieces in your wardrobe that will kind of create the core of every outfit for you that is that go-to outfit that you're never stuck for anything to wear. So definitely check that out if you are the kind of person who sometimes has absolutely nothing to wear, no idea what to wear and struggles to get dressed on a daily basis, then check out this video and I'll talk to you all really soon.